Good morning, everyone, and welcome in here on Live Now from Fox. You are taking a live look outside of Beirut. This is outside of the U.S. Embassy there over in Lebanon. I do want to get right to this breaking news that we are following out of the Middle East at this hour. A gunman shot and captured by Lebanese soldiers after a shootout that happened outside of the U.S. Embassy near Beirut. The attack taking place as tensions do continue to simmer in the Mediterranean country where months of fighting between Hezbollah militants and Israeli troops has displaced thousands along the border following years of political deadlock and economic hardship. Do want to talk about this and all of the latest developments there out of the Middle East. So let's bring in a guest here, Alex Treyman, the CEO and Jerusalem Bureau Chief over at the Jewish News Syndicate. Thank you so much, as always, for uh, joining us here this morning. Josh, thanks for having me. Of course. Well, first off, obviously information is fairly limited about this shootout there. So what do we know so far? Uh, we know that a, a suspected Syrian national uh, fired on the toward the U.S. embassy with a small arm uh, at uh, in Beirut, and that the uh, Lebanese army returned fire and is uh, injured, neutralized the uh, attacker. We don't know yet uh, if this was a coordinated attack. Uh, who was the organization that might have been behind it? But uh, certainly, the situation in Lebanon is is very very tense uh, right now with the threat of uh, all out war between uh, Israel and uh, and Hezbollah in Lebanon and certainly that uh, Hezbollah not only sees uh, Israel as an enemy but also sees the United States as an enemy as well. So no word just yet on whether this has any sort of connection to the Hezbollah and Israel fighting, right? It's still early to know. Again, it was a lone gunman, uh, and we're not yet sure uh, if he was affiliated with any organization specifically or was ordered to go or was just a lone gunman attack. All right, and you are taking a live look here from uh, near Beirut. That is, again, outside of the U.S. Embassy where folks are still gathered. We are working to gather more information on that, and we'll make sure to bring it to you as we do get it. In the meantime, do want to talk more uh, about the situation there in the Middle East as President Biden does say people have, quote, every reason to believe that Netanyahu is prolonging Israel's war against Hamas for his own political gain. The president's comments about the Israeli prime minister, part of an interview that was published Tuesday by Time magazine. Biden did also say that Netanyahu is, quote, prepared to do about anything to get the hostages back. Alex, I do kind of want to get your take on those comments there, once again, made by President Biden to Time magazine. Yeah, I, I think that uh, President Biden has given people every reason to believe that he wants Netanyahu replaced as Israel's prime minister. And, uh, you know, he, they are watching, you know, what others are saying about the war and, and kind of repeating those, those comments. Um, but if you really look at it, it's the, actually been the Biden administration that's been slamming the brakes on uh, numerous portions of this operation, right? Uh, if you look in Rafah, for example, uh, it was the Biden administration that had prevented for many, many weeks uh, Israel from going in and, and Perhaps that operation could have been over already, if if not for the uh, if not for the the delays imposed on it by by the Biden administration. Same thing with the Al Shifa Hospital. But in all of those cases, uh, Israel turns out to be justified for going in, finding the things that they said that they would find, the weapons and the tunnels. Uh, in some cases, bodies of hostages and terrorist leaders. Uh, so. You know, I don't think that most Israelis think that Netanyahu is trying to uh, stretch out this war for for political gain. At the same time, a lot of Israelis do want to see this war won swiftly and decisively. And, and I would have hoped that the United States would want the same thing. And the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations is actually circulating a draft resolution to the U.N. Security Council now that would call on Hamas to agree to the proposal that was announced by Biden last week. That's, of course, that three-phase plan we've talked about. My question for you, uh, really, what are your thoughts on that? What does it say, if anything, about the U.S. relationship with Israel? Does it say anything about it? 
Well, I think it makes clear that uh, the Biden administration wants this war to be concluded uh, before an election uh, in November. And you just heard uh, a week ago uh, Netanyahu and members of his administration saying that they expect that the war is going to continue through the end of the year. So that's that's an area of, of disagreement between the two parties. Uh, Biden definitely wants to demonstrate that he has some control over what's going on in the region. Uh, I think when you look at the parties, uh, both Hamas and Hezbollah on the one side and then Israel on the other, that the Biden ultimately does not have control over the situation. Israel is adamant that Hamas must not remain in power as a military or a political force. Uh, the current the current uh, terms on the table for a hostage release don't call for the ultimate removal of Hamas as a power. So another big disagreement between the Biden administration and Netanyahu administration in terms of uh, the friendship, the alliance between these parties. I, the, the U.S. now just signed a, a deal to sell additional F-35s to Israel. So clearly there's an alliance, but also uh, disagreements. And I did want to ask about that deal right now. Obviously, as you mentioned, that shows there's a fairly good relationship overall between the U.S. and Israel. So how would uh, some of those uh, aircraft there actually help with the war against Hezbollah over in Lebanon? Well, they're not going to help with the war against uh, Hezbollah because uh, at the very earliest, these would be delivered in, in maybe five years' time. And even in the first orders that uh, Israel's made for, for F-35 squadrons uh, from Lockheed Martin, you know, only a portion of those have been delivered so far. Israel has, I believe, 39 out of the 50 that they've ordered. Uh, so these additional, I believe, 35 uh or 25 uh, F-35s that they're, they're ordering now, Israel won't see them until 2028, maybe at the earliest. And I know we're kind of jumping all over the place, but there are so many different topics to discuss here. There's been talk about all of those tunnels that are underneath Rafa that do connect to Egypt. So my question for you, is it a real possibility here that the remaining hostages have been moved out of Gaza into Egypt? Is that something that is being considered? Oh, absolutely. Not just hostages, also a uh, senior leadership of Hamas could have used those tunnels uh, as an as an out ramp uh, to, to get out of harm's way and make sure that uh, Israel will never find them in, in Rafah. But you can understand now why why Egypt for, for many weeks and months now has not wanted the IDF to go into Rafah. Uh, you understand now that they have the IDF has uncovered at least 20 major tunnels uh, that lead into Egypt with over 80 shafts that lead into those tunnels, uh, making it easy to access them. Even if the IDF clogs up one point, there's there's other points to get into them as well. So clear that smuggling can go out uh, of Gaza into Egypt and also for years that uh, Egypt was enabling in many ways the smuggling of weapons, arms and uh, other materials into Gaza that have been used in this war against the IDF. Does it appear that Hezbollah does want an all-out war with Israel? I know that's something that is being considered right now. We've heard that Israeli officials are discussing whether it is time to go to war with Hezbollah, but also that Hezbollah is weighing whether to go to war with Israel. So what are your thoughts overall on that? Well, hard to know the full motivations of Hezbollah at this time, uh, but clearly they have been uh, massively escalating violence against Israel and increasing the number of rockets that they're firing daily. They've done immense damage to Israel's north, as you mentioned earlier. You have tens of thousands, maybe about 80,000 Israeli residents that have been displaced from their homes uh, since shortly after October 7th. Uh, there's no indication that they can return to their homes anytime soon. Uh, you know, some of these missiles and rockets that have hit in Israel have caused mass wildfires. Uh, we saw in Israel, in Israel videos of, of major swaths of, of land on fire. And, and for most Israeli citizens, they say that the government is not responding adequately. Uh, and so you have members of the war cabinet, including the prime minister, who have been in the north in the last couple of days and uh, members of the top military brass saying that the decision on whether to escalate into a full all-out war uh, with Hezbollah must take place soon. And, you know, I, I think it's inevitable that it's going to happen. Uh, Hezbollah has certainly been escalating the situation. If a ceasefire deal is reached between Israel and Hamas, do you think that would have any sort of effect on the fighting, the attacks there by Hezbollah on Israel? 
Well, it would certainly free up uh, Israel to divert uh, many of its troops and its tanks uh, and Iron Dome batteries to the north, uh, which is something that would I know that Israel wants to do. They would prefer not to be fighting two fronts at the same time. So that could hasten uh, Israel's decision to to tackle uh, Hezbollah in the north. At, at the, and at the same time, Hezbollah is looking right now at how Israel is handling pressure from the United States. Uh, it, it would appear as though they see weakness on the part of Israel and the IDF, uh, that the United States gets it to slam its foot on the brakes, uh, is, is hedging that uh, the United States is, is trying to prevent to Israel from launching war uh, in southern Lebanon as well. And they are testing to see exactly how much they can get away with. And, and right now they're getting away with a lot. All right. Alex Trayman there, CEO and Jerusalem Bureau Chief of Jewish News Syndicate. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and help break down all the latest developments there. Anything you want to add about any of the, uh, the situation there in the Middle East before I let you go? Well, as we've been saying many times, uh, when you look at who's attacking Israel, if that's Hezbollah, if that's Hamas and Gaza and the Houthis, which are now also attacking U.S. ships in the Red Sea, these are all proxies of Iran. Iran is the head of the terror octopus. Uh, this has been wrongly characterized as just another another um, round of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This is a war that is being launched by Iran via its proxies all over the region against the state of Israel. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I think that most members of the international community have not really uh, been able to frame this this conflict accordingly. All right, Alex, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. All right, I do want to take you back out to this breaking news that we are following coming in out of Beirut here. This is actually just outside the city itself and outside of the U.S. Embassy as a gunman has been shot and captured by Lebanese soldiers after a shootout outside of the embassy near Beirut. The Lebanese military in a statement saying that soldiers shot an assailant who they only described as a Syrian national. The gunman was wounded, taken to a hospital, no word on their condition. The shooter's motives not clear. However, Lebanese media have published photos that appear to show a bloodied attacker wearing a black vest with the words Islamic State written in Arabic and the English initials I and S. Local media reporting that there was a gunfight involving at least one attacker lasting almost 30 minutes. A video that surfaced on social media showed a gunman in a parking lot across the embassy's entrance uh, shooting there with what appears to be an assault rifle. Again, a lot left to figure out here. So as